Have you ever been fishing in the mid to late summer when it seems like you just can't get a bite? Well, today we're gonna to talk about why that might be happening. If you've been bass angling for a while, then you've probably heard the term thermocline. And if you haven't heard of it, well, we're gonna talk about what it is and how it can affect your bass angling. So let's jump right into it. The dog days of summer have hit and that weather is just consistently hot. Day after day after day, we have bluebird skies. The thermocline can become very, very defined. A thermocline happens when you've got three parts to a water column. You have the top layer, the thermocline, and then the bottom layer. In that top layer, the water is warmer, therefore it's less dense and stays up near the top. And the temperature, once the thermocline forms, is gonna be fairly consistent in that top part of the water column. Then in the thermocline, there's gonna be a drastic change both in temperature and oxygen level. And then in the lower part of the water column, there's very little life because there's not much oxygen down there. And bass especially have a hard time dealing with that. It stresses them out, so they're going to be located above the thermocline. Now, what types of waters does this show up in? A thermocline will not show up in rivers and it's not going to show up in reservoirs that have really strong current to them. It's also going to be less likely to form in bodies of water where there is a ton of wind or lots of runoff because there's rain coming in all the time. But if you have a natural lake, if you've got a bigger farm pond, or if you have a reservoir that doesn't have a whole lot of current coming through it, the thermocline is something that probably will form in those midsummer months and go all the way until that fall transition. Now, if we take a look at a graph here, let's say a scientist was going to chart out temperature and depth. This is a lot what it would look like. You can see in that top part that the temperature is pretty consistent. And then once we hit the thermocline, it takes a huge, huge dip and the temperatures get much cooler. And then in the bottom part of the water column, obviously it is a whole lot cooler, but you can see that it stays fairly consistent throughout the different depths. And the other thing that is so critically important is that those oxygen levels levels drop off. Now, what is going to affect the depth of the thermocline? Obviously, sunshine has a huge impact. If your lake or your pond or your reservoir has good vegetation in it and the water is fairly clear, the thermocline is gonna be much, much deeper than a body of water that is stained, dirty, or has no vegetation. The sunshine creates photosynthesis in plants and it is during that process that oxygen is released. So on the lake that I fish all the time, that thermocline can be very deep, 25, 30 foot of water, because we still have vegetation at that depth. I can go ahead and throw a jig out there in 25 foot of water and bring back weeds on my lure. So, and the water is crystal clear. So that thermocline is gonna be much deeper than if I'm fishing a lake that has a lot of stain to it and a lot of color to it. So how do we locate where this is at? Well, today's electronics make it very easy. As we mentioned earlier, that top level of the water column is less dense, and then it hits the thermocline, and the density level drastically increases. You can actually see it on your electronics as just kind of a, a thin, fuzzy band there on the screen. And if you're pretty sure that you've got stratification going on, on the lake or the water that you fish, but you don't see it on your electronics, go ahead and crank up that sensitivity level just a touch and it will probably show up. Now, once you identify the depth that the thermocline is, you want to make sure that you are fishing 
above it. As we mentioned earlier, sometimes in the mid to late summer, it seems like we get zero bites whatsoever. That often happens because as anglers, we have our lures down in the dead zone. We are too deep, we are below that thermal climb. So once I've identified where it is, I like to kind of follow it on my map, if I'm looking at my topo map, and follow that thermocline to where it intersects some sort of structure or cover. Let's say, for example, a thermocline is sitting at 20 feet and I'm sitting on a long tapering point that just really drops off into deep water. I'm not going to focus on any part of that point that is below the thermocline. I'm going to probably fish that 15 to 18 foot range and stay above it. Maybe the thermocline is sitting over the tops of trees that are out there in the lake. So I'm going to focus in that depth above the thermocline, above those trees. In the mid to late summer, bass will also look like they're suspending out in the middle of nowhere. Well, they're suspending just above that thermocline. So make sure that you check your electronics for bait fish that might be out there, maybe big schools of sunfish that might be out there. Where you find the life, you will find the bass for sure. Now, how long does the thermocline last? Well, it's going to go from that midsummer all the way through late summer and into the early fall, and it will either completely disappear or start to change levels as the weather starts to change. If you get a bunch of wind, you get a bunch of rain coming into a lake, that's going to reposition a thermocline. And then as the days get shorter, the air temperature gets cooler, that top part of the water column is going to cool down because become more dense and eventually they're going to flip. The bottom part of the water column is going to come up. The top of the water column is going to cool down so much it's going to sink. In the fishing world we call this the turnover and that can cause some pretty uh, challenging situations as well but we're going to save that for another video maybe in a couple months we'll talk about the fall turnover and how to approach it. It's not a bad idea every time that you get in the boat and head out to the lake, if your body of water is one that stratifies, to check those electronics and see is that thermocline where it was last week? Have we had some wind? Has there been four or five cloudy days in a row? Have we had some rain where some runoffs coming into the water? All of those things will impact where that thermocline is positioned. So go ahead and take a few minutes and bump up that sensitivity just a little bit if you need to and see where that thermocline is positioning. If you're fishing in the mid to late summer and you're just not getting bites, there's a really good chance that your lures are below the thermocline if the body of water that you're fishing stratifies. Remember, if there's a lot of current to it, it's always getting hit by wind, a reservoir where the dam operators are pulling a ton of current, the thermoclines either will not be present or they will be much less defined than on a lake that does not have current moving through it. Now, if you'd like to watch a video that talks about, hey, should I go shallow or deep as a bass angler, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.